Hey Pokemon fans, it's Jay Wits here, and I know it's been a while, but I'm finally back with another Pokemon Top 10. It's October, Halloween is just around the corner, so what better way to celebrate this month than with the Top 10 Creepiest Things in Pokemon. And with this list, I'm going straight canon. No fan theories, no stories, no speculation, just straight up things that have happened within the Pokemon universe. Let's check it out. Number 10. Pokemon are food. Multiple times in the Pokemon universe, it's mentioned that Pokemon are eaten as some kind of delicacy. Sometimes the Pokemon world seems so cuddly and innocent that you'd assume everyone's a vegetarian, but you'd be wrong. There's an entire plot point in Gold and Silver where Team Rocket is illegally selling slowpoke tails for consumption. And in Kalos, the two-star restaurant straight up serves it as a dish you can pay for. And then there's the Sinnoh Myths, which mention picking the bones clean of the Pokemon you eat. And speaking of the Sinnoh Myths... Number 9. In this creepy Pokemon lore story, we learn about a man who finds a sword, murders Pokemon with it non-stop with the sword because it's fun, and then stops when he learns that the Pokemon didn't like that very much. I swear I'm not making this up. It's available straight in the Kanalave library. So yeah, you think eating Pokemon is bad? Well, apparently, there was once a time when they were butchered for fun. Number 8. The Missing No Hall of Fame Glitch. Pretty much anyone who played Red and Blue when it was out knows of the Missing No Glitch, a programming quirk in the games that became surprisingly helpful by duplicating your items. And while Missing No was proven to never actually harm your data, even if you caught it, there was one side effect that players had to deal with to pay for their actions. Your Hall of Fame instantly becomes nightmare fuel. I don't even know how to explain it. All I've ever seen is hideous combinations of Pokemon limbs, sounds I didn't know were possible for the Game Boy to make, and a mess that isn't even readable half the time. Somebody please explain to me, what am I even looking at? What is this? What is that? Why is this happening to me? Number seven. The Old Chateau. Somebody at Game Freak must love ghosts, because there's a ton of them in a ton of generations. And I'm not talking about Pokemon, I'm talking about people. The Old Chateau is the home of the only Rotom in Generation 4, but it's also a haunted house that even terrifies the gym leader Gardenia. Inside, there are statues that seem to follow you with their eyes, haunted paintings, and occasionally ghosts of a little girl and butler that slide across the screen with no walk animation, and then disappear forever. All of this is amplified by one of the scariest themes in a Pokemon game to date. If this wasn't the only place you could get a Rotom, I wouldn't even come here. Number 6. The X and Y Hexmaniac Ghost. There's a moment from Pokemon X and Y with more ghosts. If you haven't reached this in X and Y or don't want the moment spoiled for you in the new game right now, you can click the annotation up in the top left to skip to the next number. Lumio City is a bright and colorful place. It has a cheery theme, wonderful atmosphere, and lots to do. But on one floor of one unmarked building, this happens. I'm not gonna lie, this scene made me straight up shudder when I first experienced it playing late at night. And you might think, how on earth is this creepier than something like the old chateau? But the answer is context. Ghost showing up in a haunted house? I expect that. Ghost showing up in the happiest place on earth? Yeah. Definitely surprised me and creeped me out. And I'm glad it did, because the real haunted house in X and Y? So disappointing. Number 5. Pokemon Manga Zombies In the Pokemon Adventures manga, we get a lovely segment where Ghastly possesses a dead side at Carcass, complete with missing eye holes. And if that wasn't enough to make you want to puke, don't worry, the side at Carcass gets dissolved in Arbok Acid. Nope, that doesn't do it for you? Don't worry, the Arbok gets sliced in two by a Charmeleon. Awesome? Maybe. But creepy and disgusting? Definitely. Number 4 the Black and White Ghost Girl. And finally rounding out our ghost trio comes the one from Black and White and Black and White 2. 
In black and white, there's a girl that will occasionally appear and then disappear into thin air at the Marvelous Bridge. Not much is known about her, except that an old lady mentioned she loved Abra. Maybe she's teleporting with one. Nope. She's dead for sure. But what makes her the darkest ghost of them all is that she actually reveals her method of death. Darkrai. In black and white too at the strange house, we hear her ghost say the following. An everlasting dark dream. An endless dream of darkness. Dad? Mom? Abra? Where are you? In the dark dream, I heard my dad's voice. Forget about the Lunar Wing. Please stay here with me. Oh, the Lunar Wing. I can't take it now. But it'll be okay. Please return the wing of the Pokemon. I was waiting on the bridge so I could return it myself. The Lunar Wing of Cresselia is said to be the strongest cure for dispelling nightmares. This poor girl couldn't get the wing in time, accepted her fate, and fell to Darkrai's insidious nightmare. Just sometimes, when it really wants to, Pokemon can be really dark. Right. Ugh. Number 3. Sabrina in the anime. Sabrina is by far the creepiest thing in the anime. She uses a terrifying doll to talk for her while the body just sits idly by. She turns the main crew, and even her own mother, into dolls. She's a schizophrenic monster that's conflicted between her normal and crazy personalities, and the end result is something that pretty much anyone watching the anime at the time was not ready for. Sabrina gave me nightmares for weeks as a kid, and it's no wonder Pokemon hasn't ever touched an antagonist as creepy as her since. Number 2! Lavender Town. Pretty much every Pokemon fan in the world knew this was making the list. The original Lavender Town left such a profound impact on Pokemon fans. And with good reason. It's extremely creepy. You've got the droning, high-pitched music. A Pokemon graveyard where someone mourns Growlithe, killed by Team Rocket. A kid that claims that they can see a white hand on your shoulder. And in Origins, it's actually there. A tower full of ghosts and crazy cultists. One of them wants your blood. A dead Marowak mother. Somehow, Game Freak was able to cram all of this terror into 8 bits of glory, and it left a lasting impact on players to this day. Number 1! The Pokedex. Sure, the games might have had some creepy stuff in them, but by far the worst of it lies in the Pokedex entries. Somewhere, a sadistic man sits, waiting for each Pokemon game to release so he can fill it with the darkest things imaginable. And every generation, this man succeeds. I don't even know where to begin. I've done three episodes on creepy Pokedex entries, and there are still dozens more that I have left to document. So, here's a nice mix for you. You've got Hypno, Child Kidnapper, Drifloon, Child Kidnapper, Frillish, not exclusively kidnapper of children, but likes to drown people in the sea. The new Phantump from X and Y joins the fray. Apparently they're made from children that die in the forest. Then you've got Pokemon that eat their prey, dissolve their bones, drain their fluids, and the list goes on and on and on. The Pokedex is a sick place, harboring all kinds of horrible secrets that you've never noticed because you were too busy jamming your finger on the A button. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to hear some more facts about creepy things in Pokemon, along with some other Pokemon facts, click the Pokeball to check out my Pokemon fact video with Did You Know Gaming. And if you like this video, you can click this button here to subscribe to my channel. Catch you next video.